for the invitation. You thought you were welcome. I was waiting. The special meeting of the Annapolis City Council on Tuesday, March 26, 2024 will be called to order at 7 uh, p.m. At this time, please join us for the invocation given by, given by Alderman Pindell Charles and uh, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a very difficult day for our state as well as our nation. And would we all please bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing us to this place, this place of decision making, this place of camaraderie, but also this place of sadness this evening. We, we listened to the news this morning to see that the cargo ship had hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge where lives most probably have been lost. Lord, they were doing their jobs, fixing potholes, potholes that we pass over every day and we take it for granted. But Lord, we thank you for the lives that are lived, the lives that are still living, and even those who may have passed on doing the job and doing your will in the everyday time that we have every day. Bless their families, Lord, their, their children, um, their friends, their neighbors, their loved ones who are in Latin America. And Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory even on this day, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, sir. Mayor Buckley. Aye. Alderman Tierney. Aye. Alderman O'Neill. Present. Alderman Pendel Charles. Present. Alderman Finlayson. Alderman Shandemeyer. Present. Alderman Gay. Alderman Savage. Alderman Savage. Present. Thank you. Alderman Arnett. Okay. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, please present the uh, first item of the agenda. Yes, sir. The first item is approval of the agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item of the agenda is ceremonial items beginning with ID 6324. Citation to Steve S Samaras, owner and president of Zachary's Jewelers. Well, it looks like it's uh, the Steve Samaras fan club night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this job for I've been doing this job for six years now. And uh, finally, some bling. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm going to put this on while we give you the citation. If you pl could please come forward, Steve, who is uh, such an amazing part of this community, uh, just continues to give and give, and is also, I'll come up to you, we'll come up to you, yep. And is also uh, related to every second person in Annapolis. <laughs> Cool. Look at this. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go, really. <laughs> so. We need a picture of this in next year's magazine. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We've never done this before. All right, we appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to come around Thanks. the front for help? Yeah. And we'll um, give you this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Um, you know, on a day like today, it, this is such an honor um, to present this and to read this. And as 
people will hear, it, it demonstrates such an act of kindness, and it's just something that we need to hear on a day like today. So thank you so much, and thank you for the privilege of reading this. On behalf of the residents of the city of Annapolis, we are pleased to confer upon you the city council citation in recognition of your work as an Annapolis business owner, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Zachary's Jewelers has been a mainstay of Annapolis's Main Street for more than 40 years. We thank you for all you do to lift up the Annapolis business community and to support a strong, historic downtown Annapolis. When we asked you recently to engrave the Annapolis mayoral collar, shown here, <laughs> or mayoral chain, with the names of the last three Annapolis mayors, you did so quickly and without asking for compensation. Thank you for your expertise and generosity. The Annapolis mayoral chain was delivered from England to Mayor Dean Johnson. Mayor Ellen Moyer and Mayor Josh Cohen both updated the chain with their names, but it was missing the names of Mayor Mike Panalides and Mayor Buckley. We thank you for helping us to keep this tradition alive in our historic city. Thank you, thank you so much. Now a few words from the legend. <laughs> I don't know what I could say to uh, top that. I just I appreciate the uh, the recognition, obviously, and you know this is this is my home. It has been. I'm born and raised in Annapolis, and wouldn't think of any other place to be uh, to support the community, the local government. Our mayor is near and dear to my heart. Always has been. Always will be. The people that share the love of Annapolis are seated right back here with me. Um, and Ellie, to your point today, as much as I love the recognition, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, uh, Sheila, I'll talk to her later. <laughs> Where's she? Sheila! the whole meeting so don't let me walk home without with it on I don't want to get arrested uh, <laughs> uh, mr. city attorney next item on the agenda please yes sir the next item on the agenda is ID 7124 citation to friends of transit workers so uh, chair of the sorry so Marcus please come forward I, are you gonna read this uh, at all I my understanding was that uh, Alderman O'Neill might read it because she heads up the Transportation Committee. Do you have a copy of this in front of you or shall I read it? Well, Rhonda's on Transportation Committee. Well, I have a copy of it. Oh, there okay, you go. Great. Okay, You're excellent. Set. So I'm going to come up while I'm, I've got my bling on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Rhonda, you want to come up because you're on the transportation committee? Yeah. Sorry, Rhonda. <laughs> Put you in the middle, and then Alderman O'Neill, whenever you are ready. All right, thank you very much. Uh, whereas the city of Annapolis recognizes the importance of that transit workers play in connecting communities within the city of Annapolis, and whereas in 2023, the total number of ri riders taken to jobs, grocery stores, appointments, and other destinations was 307,777, and whereas transportation employees are the backbone of efficient and a well-run public transportation system, working diligently behind the scenes to ensure seamless operations, and whereas transit, transit drivers are front-facing staff who engage with the public and take great care in getting their passengers from one place to another safely and on time, and whereas transportation should be both affordable and accessible, transportation routes in the city ensure that residents are able to travel safely between communities, so educational institutions, oh, to educational institutions, to and from employment, to special events and entertainment, and whereas transportation workers do their part to keep our economy going, especially during difficult times, and whereas all residents and visitors in the city of Annapolis should take the time to thank a transit worker on Transportation Worker Appreciation Day and every day. Now, therefore, Gavin Buckley, Mayor of the City of Annapolis and the City Council, do hereby proclaim March 18th, 2024 as Transit Worker Appreciation Day in the city of Annapolis. Yeah. Thank you, Marcus, <laughs> and all of our transportation so employees. Marcus is our wants to say a couple of words if you can. Thank you, Council, Mayor, and everyone for this. Uh, for recognizing all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes to keep our system running. It's very much appreciated and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Marcus. Man. Mr. City Attorney, please present the next on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is ID 7224, Proclamation, Transgender Day of Visibility. All right. Come on up. Get a little hug in here before we start. <laughs> All right, so uh, proclamation. Uh, whereas the city of Annapolis seeks to acknowledge, support, and celebrate all people who join in the observance of International Transgender Day of Visibility to honor transgender, gender non conforming, and non binary people for their resilience activism and contributions to society. And whereas we stand with transgender individuals, including families and friends, co-workers and neighbors who seek the same rights, understanding and equality that each person in our community deserves. And whereas on this day we celebrate and support the free and full expression of many transgender people in our community. And whereas we are committed to ensuring all members of the transgender community are free from discrimination and harassment in any form. And whereas the city's Human Rights Commission works to prevent and respond to hatred and inform pol policies related to all communities, including, including the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas we respect and honor the rights of transgender, gender non-conforming, and non-binary communities to live openly in an authentic and accurate represent representation of who they are, free from violence, harassment, and prejudice, and on International Transgender Day of Visibility, we reaffirm 
our commitment to stand with and for the rights and dignity of worldwide of the worldwide transgender community. On now, therefore, I, Gavin Buckley, and the whole city council and the whole city <laughs> proclaim March 31, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. Thank you. Well, um, as many people know, Annapolis Pride would not exist if it was not for you and the work that you kind of laid the groundwork for. Um, and we're really lucky to live here in Annapolis. We've seen a lot of attacks continuing on the transgender community across the country. And we know that we're here continuing to do work in Annapolis and it is a much safer place thanks to the work of everybody here and Annapolis Pride. So we're just really happy that we're here and working with you on this. Thank you so much. Lots of love in the room today. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is petitions, reports, and communications, beginning with update from the mayor. Right. So thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to grieve and reflect on the tragic Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse overnight. Uh, Baltimore is a major American port, critical to global commerce. Our entire region will feel the effect as we continue recovery efforts for months and perhaps even years. The city of Annapolis stands prepared to offer assistance to our friends and colleagues in the city of Baltimore, Baltimore County and Arundel County, Maryland Department of Emergency Management, Maryland Department of Transportation, and the United States Coast Guard. Early this morning, Annapolis Fire and the Annapolis Office of Emergency Management deployed members of the incident management team to assist with the response. The city of Annapolis stands ready to offer continued assistance uh, to the teams engaged in the continuing rescue, recovery, and rebuilding efforts. If we could take a moment of silence now for those now presumed to have perished in this tragic, unthinkable incident. Thank you. We know that Maryland is in shock and will be in shock for a, a long time to come. Uh, coming up next week, April 4 to 7, the Annapolis Film Festival returns with a four day lineup of films from around the world. Uh, the Film Festival not only showcases amazing feature, short and documentary movies, it also provides opportunities for reflection and discussion that help us broaden our thinking and share with others. Uh, 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 it's a wonderful dialogue that brings us together and we need more of that, of that in these times. Uh, I hope you'll take advantage of, uh, of having this wonderful local event here on our doorstep. It has something for everyone. Uh, on that note, uh, on Sunday, uh, the last day of the film festival, April 7th at City Hall, we will also host a movie screening of a, and a panel discussion to help foster our local cycling revolution. Can you put the revolution sign up, Rob Savage and Karma? And <laughs> it's this one. No. <laughs> uh, as we move away from our reliance on cars, uh, the movie we are screening is called Together We Cycle. 
It is a story of how the Netherlands turned around a post-war car-centric culture and created a pedestrian and cycling culture by building safe infrastructure and road design that puts cyclists and people first. Uh, we learned about this transformation on our study tour to the Netherlands last year. And at the screening, we also show a five minute short film showcasing our visit and all the amazing things we did and saw and learned on the trip. The Cycling Revolution movie event is free, uh, but ticketed as we have limited seating here at City Hall. It'll be kind of a first here at City Hall. Please visit Eventbrite and use the keyword City Hall double feature uh, in Annapolis to reserve your seat. Thank you. Uh, next, some Annapolis uh, firefighters earned bragging rights on Friday in an exhibition hockey match against Baltimore City firefighters. We won five to three. So a big round of applause for our firefighters. <laughs> Annapolis's bravest is their name, is a hockey team made up of AFD personnel along with personnel from some partner public safety agencies. The team is sponsored by IAFF Local 1926. Uh, the game was an exhibition match in preparation for the upcoming DC Burn Foundation tournament set for April 5th in Laurel. Congratulations on the win and best of luck in the tournament. That's another round of applause for those guys. <clears throat> Uh, you may have noticed moderate flooding forecast from NOAA for Anna from Anna Annapolis yesterday and today and likely tomorrow. These are typical forecasts where we deploy public safety teams to, compl to close Compromise Street when the water overtops the bulkhead alongside the Fleet Reserve Club <laughs> and then spills out into the street, making the street impassable. Uh, when Compromise Street is closed, folks from Eastport trying to get downtown have to go the long way around and it's quite an inconvenience. Our city dock will uh, work will provide a more permanent solution in the future, but that is in a couple of years. In the meantime, uh, one of the technologies we learned about from the Netherlands has provided has proved to be an effective and inexpensive solution here in Naples. And over the past few moderate flooding events has helped keep Compromise Street open when it normally would be closed. Uh, I want to thank Department of Public Works Director Ber Vogel and his team for the deployment and engineering of this solution. Thank you, Burr and the Public Works team. We truly appreciate you guys. Great job. <laughs> and. Uh, for the record, the water is up to Alex Haley's feet. Um, it was as I was leaving work tonight at five o'clock. Um, uh, at City Hall now through next month, check out the winning bird photos submitted by local residents for our first ever bird photo contest. Um, part of our Bird City Maryland certification. They are all downstairs in the lobby and they're wonderful. We are thankful to Jack Turner and Katie Neal for assisting in choosing winners of the photo contest. Uh, the winners received a gift card and birding accessories from Wild Birds Unlimited. The gallery of photos is available for viewing during regular business hours here at City Hall. And lastly, a reminder that city offices are closed this Friday for Good Friday. We wish all our residents who celebrate a very happy Easter, we wish them uh, to ha a great day on Sunday, uh, thank you, everybody. And now let us get on with the meeting. Mr. City Attorney. Yes, sir. The next item is report by committees. Okay. Uh, Alderman Terry. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, on March 20th. Uh, we had a presentation from our auditors that was uh, attended as well by um, the uh, audit committee uh, and members of the Financial Advisory Commission. Um, it was a very thorough meeting of our, um, um, of our, what's the acronym? <laughs> I can't think of it right now. Um, and we um, had questions answered as well. Um, ACFR, thank you. Um, and then also we had uh, an update um, from 
from Director Dickinson and uh, the Assistant City Manager, and uh, they were uh, answered. So our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, April 3rd at 10.30 a.m. Thank you. Anybody else? Alderman Shanamai. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, economic Matters did not meet in March due to no legislation. We will be meeting in April at our usual time. All right, seeing no hands. Oh, I see a hand. Uh, Alderman Finlayson. Oh, and uh, Alderman Calmer O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the Rules and City Government Committee met on March 15th and we addressed three pieces of legislation. 032, short-term rental licenses and reg regulations. We gave that a favorable recommendation with amendments. We addressed 0324, city council nominations to boards and commissions and committees. We postponed action on that legislation. And on R424, uh, we took no action on that resolution. The next meeting will be on Friday, April the 5th, at uh, 1 o'clock here in Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman O'Neill. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The Transportation Committee met on March 13th. Uh, we had a presentation and update from Annapolis Premium Parking um, there, um, along with Director Moore, the um, East Coast Regional Director, Chesto Escobar, um, their vice president um, and their marketing um, president, Brendan Buckmeiser. They reported to us um, some findings from mystery shoppers that they've had done uh, for the past two months, as well as a focus group um, that consists of residents and businesses downtown to get at the heart of some of the issues going on at Hillman Garage. Um, they are continuing to do work on that and we'll be doing another presentation in May, I believe, um, about um, any of the additional changes. And our next Transportation Committee meeting is scheduled for April the 10th um, in Council Chambers at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Pindell Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> About a week ago, I had an opportunity to review our public safety numbers for January 1st through March 13th, 2024, specifically our Office of Emergency Management, OEM, as it relates to substance use disorders, and our police department, APD, as it relates to crime. Overall, for seven out of our eight wards, the numbers look good. And from what I've heard, my colleagues so far are pleased, especially as it relates to their individual wards. I have not heard any negative comments. Nevertheless, there's always room for improvement, so we should not get overly confident nor rest on any of our laurels. The very hard work must continue, and we can't let up at all. However, there's one ward that is suffering, and that ward is Ward 3. Yes, it's my ward. I will admit that I have been totally focused and fixated citywide on homicides, shootings, and shots fired. Nevertheless, Ward 3's numbers are extremely concerning. As the Council's Public Safety Standing Committee Chair, I take full responsibility for this lapse, along with sincerely apologizing here to my Ward 3 residents. Unlike some of our other wards with those who are suffering from substance use disorders, where these persons are part of specific clusters of communities and neighborhoods, and therefore the necessary resources can be laser focused and targeted, this is not the case in Ward 3. When it comes to substance use disorders in Ward 3, the profile of those who are suffering are Black males between the ages of 55 and 64 years old with overdoses occurring on the streets and sidewalks, mainly on Wednesdays as well as Fridays, primarily between the hours of 6 p.m. and 12 midnight. In Ward 3, typically and historically, this age bracket of 55 to 64 involves persons who have had long-term employment with our various governmental agencies, including the state, where paydays occur on every other Wednesday, the county, where paydays occur on every other Friday, and around the county public schools, where paydays occur on every, every other Wednesday, and the city, where paydays occur on every other Friday. Also, out of the 39 days of the year that federal Social Security checks are forwarded to beneficiaries, 72% of these checks are paid out on Wednesdays. When it comes to crime in Ward 3, aggravated assaults, as well as thefts, thefts from autos and thefts of autos top the list. 
Aggravated assaults are mainly occurring on the weekends, and these theft incidents are occurring on Wednesdays between 12 noon and 6 p.m., Tuesdays between 6 p.m. and 12 midnight, and Fridays between 6 p.m. and 12 midnight. These offenses are occurring mainly at business establishments. Ward 3 has by far more businesses than any other ward in the city. According to the Maryland State Department of Assessments and Taxation, there are over 700 businesses operating in Ward 3, which includes auto dealerships, auto repair shops, auto parts stores, and a variety and myriad of other businesses located in six different and defined business districts. These offenses are occurring in the 1700 block of Forest Drive, the 200 block of Old Solomon's Island Road, the unit block of Dorsey Avenue, and the 19 and 2000 blocks of West Street. With all of this being said, once I saw Ward 3's numbers, I immediately provided my thoughts to our OEM and APD leadership. As a result, we are in the process of immediately developing some very supportive plans and resources to assist our Ward 3 residents who need help in order to combat substance use disorders. On the other hand, it relates, as it relates to crime in Ward 3, we're in the process of immediately developing some very aggressive tools to combat this unwarranted criminal behavior that affects everyone's quality of life. And so our residents and businesses should start to see some real results in the month of April. Our plan is to meet monthly until further notice for the purpose of very closely tracking and monitoring these numbers and making the necessary adjustments along the way. Nevertheless, I plan to remain vigilant when it comes to our numbers regarding substance use disorders and crime citywide, and especially homicides, shootings, and shots fired, which are the most egregious. My message to all Ward 3 residents and other residents as well, if you have a loved one that has possibly been a long-term user of illegal substances, and now these substances are even being laced with deadly substances, and your family has probably been suffering because of it for a long time, then you can certainly reach out to our Office of Emergency Management anonymously at 410-216 9167. Again, that's 410-216-9167. The city can help, and no one needs to know who you are when you call. Let's all try to help our loved ones and neighbors and those who are in distress. Helping them helps us all. Thank you. The next meeting of our Public Safety Standing Committee is scheduled for Monday, April the 1st at 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Thank you again. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is comments by the general public. Okay, we do not have anyone signed up to speak on 0-4-24 residency requirements for liquor licensees repeal. Uh, going up. Is this comments by the general public or it's public comment period? Public. Comments by the general public, yep. Hello. Hello, please come forward and state your full name and address. Thank you. And it'll be up here, yeah. Thank you. Right there. Hi. Um. There we go. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm David Michaels. I am the uh, uh, Women's Program Community Outreach and Development Officer for the Chase Home Charitable Foundation. We are 133 and, and just, year old. Just one address, please, for the record. Thank you. Uh, 22 Thank Maryland you. Avenue, Thank Annapolis. You. Thank you. Uh, we are housed at the uh, Chase Lloyd House. It's a 250 year old historic property built by Samuel Chase, uh, Sons of Liberty, and Supreme Court Justice. Uh, for the past 133 years, we have been serving senior women who have been suffering the vicissitudes of life, but. Um, uh, during COVID, we had to close the facility due to repair and due to fire regulations. And so we have adjusted the mission, the board and the executive director uh, moved the mission outward. Uh, we now partner with over 40 benevolence organizations like St. Vincent de Paul, the YWCA, EP Church, Blessed and Tech Ministries, Lighthouse Shelter. And we have two programs. We have the eviction prevention, and we have um, emergency prevention of evictions. Uh, we give money uh, directly to organizations like le uh, community legal services, civil justice, ACDS, and we collaborate with them to keep people from being evicted sometimes tomorrow. We can turn a check around right away and be able to help those people stay out of eviction. The 
mission though is to expand and support more housing, affordable housing, both in Anne Arundel County and in Annapolis. Um, we support the Comprehensive 2040 plan. Uh, we've attended some of those meetings, but uh, I know with all these very heavy duty plans, the, the process gets watered down. Things get voted out um, and safe, secure, and affordable housing for those that uh, are at the poverty level, but also the workforce housing um, is difficult. So we are asking, and if you need our support or need for us to testify, we are here to support not watering down the comprehensive plan, but to build more affordable housing and to make sure that you don't have food deserts after you build all this affordable housing. And um, we, we also uh, held the first ever affordable housing symposium, November 1st, the mayor did open that session. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the second affordable housing symposium is October 29th, 2024. It's the Tuesday before the election Tuesday. Um, uh, Secretary Jake Day has uh, going to be in person. He's committed to be there to open the affordable housing symposium. We are inviting all of you. Thank you for your time. And please uh, don't water down the comprehensive plan, especially as it relates to housing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have a um, David, question. sorry, David. David, sorry, it's had a question. Good to see you again. Question by Autumn yes. Pendel Charles. Thank you so much for testifying. And you indicated that within this affordable housing, you want to make sure that we don't have food deserts. So you're in favor of the infrastructure that needs to be developed for the affordable housing. Yes, yes, ma'am. Totally. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again, David. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward and speak? Just going to consider comments by the general public closed. Thank you. Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item agenda. The next item on the agenda is public hearings, beginning with Ordinance 0424, residency requirement for liquor licenses repeal. No one signed up to speak. Going once, going twice. I declare the public hearing on 0 4 24 closed. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next item agenda. Yes, the next item is legislative actions beginning with first readers. Resolutions R1124, filing of grant application with the Transit Administration. Uh, is there a motion to adopt R-11-24 on first reader? So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we have a filing deadline, so if someone could move this to suspend the rules, please. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, thank you. Could I get a motion on, oh, sorry, not a motion. Motion on second reader. So moved. Second. Uh, Madam City Clerk. Point yes. of uh, question, yes. Mr. Mayor. Um, if we can get the transportation director uh, up here, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, director Moore, just a quick question on some of the transportation grants and initiatives. Uh, something that comes up uh, pretty frequently is our routes are in desperate need of changing. Um, in two areas that people want to go a little more. Um, I've heard is a reason why we have been slow to do so is due to grants. Are these those grants that make it difficult for us to actually change the routes? Well, these are the ones, um, Alderman uh, Shandamara, to keep us going that come up each year. Um, one of the reasons that we asked to waive the rules uh, for this particular one uh, is just because we got a lot of the information late from the federal government. One of the things to look at uh, going forward is our TDP. You know, we talked about the transit development plan that comes every five years. And that was what was voted on in FY24 to pay our local share of 10% to um, have a transportation planning company called uh, KFH to perform this. We had a kickoff meeting with them um, earlier this month. Um, and that'll be all inclusive of uh, everything from looking at the routes, fare free, uh, the type of service, what we're working on with uh, the microtransit and, and things of that nature. So this particular one is, um, is just kind of keeping us going. But what, what you were asking is how we move forward for doing things a little bit different than what we have. And that's where the TDP comes in each every five years. 
and I'll be sure to make sure um, be sure to get the transportation board in the committee more information as that starts rolling out um, to share your ideas and what the community is looking for as we grow this to be more inclusive for, as a regional partner in transportation. Thank you for the clarification, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marcus. What is a roll call? Um, yes, sir. Mayor Buckley. Aye. Um, Alderman O'Neill. Aye. Alderman Pendel Charles. Aye. Alderman Finlayson. Aye. Alderman Shanna Meyer. Aye. Alderman Savage. Aye. Alderman Tierney. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hang in there. there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next on the agenda. Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda for first reader is R1324, 2024 Annapolis Film Festival Fee Waiver. So a motion to adopt R-13-24 on first reader. So moved. Thank you. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, can I get a motion to suspend the rules? We have a deadline as well, this one. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Did we get everyone? Yeah. Okay. That's it, thank you. Could I get a motion uh, on second reader, please? So moved. Uh, se second. So Okay, thank you. Roll, roll call. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alderman O'Neill. Uh, me? I, how, how about Mayor Buckley first? Uh, aye. <laughs> Alderman O'Neill. Aye. Alderman Pitt, then Layson. Aye. I'm sorry. Alderman <laughs> Pendel Charles. Aye, aye. <laughs> Alderman Pitt Layson. Aye. Alderman Shanda Meyer. Aye. Alderman Savage. Aye. Alderman Tierney. I have to cut you off. <laughs> Joe, I, I, no kidding. I think we got everybody in it passed. All right, it passes. And thank you, everybody, for your patience. This is the first time we've had three people uh, remotely this way. So uh, I think you did a pretty good job considering, right? Yeah, this is pretty efficient. <laughs> you guys look good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. City Attorney, please present the next on the agenda. The agenda is complete, Mr. Mayor. All right. Is there anything else for good order? Alderman Pendel Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to in, uh, indicate that our Award 3 Community Liaison is in the audience, Ms. Debbie Odom. Some of you may know her from Rec and Parks uh, for several years, so uh, we thank her for coming on board and assisting our ward in many different areas. Uh, thank you, Ms. Odom. Hey, thank you. Anybody else? That's uh, Alderman O'Neill. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I know I got to read the proclamation for the Department of Transportation and our um, ode to transportation workers, but I wanna give a shout out also to our director, Marcus Moore. Um, because he is probably one of the most responsive directors. He is there day and night answering questions and helping us out. And I know that it's been really tough with all of the parking questions and everything else, but I wanna thank him very much for all that he's doing. Thanks, Marcus. Thank Boy, do I second that. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and we got him to ride a bike in, in uh, the Netherlands. That was great. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you all. Uh, Mr. City, oh, sorry, look, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, Second. All, the, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, it's close to a record. Media adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.